Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and in this video I want to share with you some of the processes I'm using while I start to put together the arrangements for my album that I'm recording. If you've been following me on the blog you'll know that I'm in the process of trying to record some songs that I've had for a, quite a while and uh, I'm trying to record them but put something of a more modern slant on them than they uh, originally would have had and what we've got here is a song called This Close to Falling in Love which is actually going to be the opening track of the album now although I'm a guitarist I'm not a bass player I don't have a bass guitar and I also couldn't really play on the bass some of the bass lines that I normally write um, and so for all of the above reasons I play bass by playing it on the keyboard and it's something I've done for years. Having played it in on the keyboard what I try and do is line the bass up with the drums. Now I've got two techniques that I use for this. Uh, one that we're going to explore in this video and one that I'll be looking at in a future video uh, when I'm looking at groove quantizing. But what I want to look at in this video is how I go through and do an initial quantize on the bass line and tidy it up to convert my sometimes less than perfect playing into a respectable bass part. So I'm working here on uh, this close to falling in love and uh, I've got to the point where I'm about to edit the first part in the chorus. Um, I like to play in the parts as far as possible as an entire song section um, as long as it's abandoned trying to play in the whole song in one pass it just doesn't work my keyboard skills aren't that good uh, but in this case um, I had to break down the keyboard part for the bass into three sections for the chorus a repeating section that runs around twice and then the bit at the end and the bit at the end basically uh, is because the drum patterns at the end of each chorus are slightly different but we're going to have a look here at the bass. So we just open up the bass part. As you can see I'm using the broomstick bass which is my preferred VST instrument and there's a couple of issues we can see straight away. Uh, one is that my playing is not smack bang on the grid. There are issues where the notes are in advance or behind the beat. And the other is that the bass is a monophonic instrument but I've got it playing two notes next to each other here at the same time. I'm going to look at how we fix both of those issues. Now, there's a fashion for putting stuff smack bang on the grid. You just hit quantize, off you go, and everything lines up perfectly to the graph paper. I'm not a believer that that is something you should aspire to. Uh, one of the great rhythm sections of our time is John McVie and Mick Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac and it's often been said that the reason they are so successful as a rhythm section is that Fleetwood tends to play slightly ahead of the beat whereas John McVie lays back just behind the beat and it's the tension between their playing because it's constant and it's just the way they are as players and they've played together for so long it's that tension between them that gives Fleetwood Mac's rhythm its character. Now whether you aspire to be uh, the best of British blues exported to an LA laid-back feel is down to you. The point is, if you want a human feel to your music, quantizing it rigidly to the beat is not the way to go. And as I said, there's a couple of tricks you can use that will help you to avoid becoming mechanistic and rigid. The first I'm going to look at in this video is the IQ not your intelligence but what Cubase refers to as iterative quantize. You'll see there's an IQ button lit up there next to the 16th. That's because I've actually got the quantize value set to a 16th. If I turn off iterative quantize and we go back to just a normal Q and I hit the Q button on the keyboard everything lines up smack on the grid whereas if I undo that and then I go for the iterative quantize when I hit Q everything moves closer to the grid 
it's pretty much on it all the way through but you'll see there are some notes that still refuse to line up perfectly on the grid and that is because what iterative quantize does is it moves your notes towards the grid it doesn't line them up perfectly on the grid so it enables you to retain a certain looseness in your f playing and the amount to which it does it is set by this control the iterative strength in the quantize panel in the inspector in the editor so having done that um, we can now have a look through. The one thing you have to do when you do any form of quantizing is make sure that it's moving the notes in the right direction. If you're not careful when you quantize, sometimes you find things get moved well off the grid. Um, if that's the case, I don't tend to move things because you're still going to end up quantizing them and snapping them to the grid if you've got the snap turned on. So you, I can either turn your snap off and move the note manually or what you can also do is select the note and you can actually physically adjust these up here um, what you can do is adjust the start point or the end point and you'll notice that it retains the tick value of the original note so you can move things around so that they're, start, they're near to the right bit of line but they're still not quite on the line. You can preserve the fluidity in the playing for want of a better way of phrasing it. You can also adjust the length of the note once you've finished. But what we're going to look at now is making sure that all these notes where they overlap don't overlap. But we want to keep all these gaps if you go into the MIDI uh, options here and you go into functions you'll see there's a legato option now what that would do is it would link all the notes together so there were no gaps between the notes which is not what we want we want to do precisely the opposite we want to delete the overlaps now oddly enough delete overlaps mono is not what you want that will delete overlaps between notes with the same note value what you want is delete overlaps poly which will delete any overlaps between notes whether they're the same note or a different note and the way it does this is it says that note starts there so that note has to end there so we'll do delete overlaps poly and there you have it the notes suddenly tighten up and now you have a monophonic bass line that's perfectly capable of being played by a real bass player um, and that's it. Hope that was useful. Gives you some food for thought about how you might want to go about adjusting your bass lines when you're recording them. And so I'll leave you with a quick snippet of our edited bass line. And until the next video, you take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm.